How's it going, everybody? Tobin here. I've been getting a lot of requests um, over the years on how to start streaming and uh, recording videos, podcasts, all that kind of stuff. So I figured I'd make a video uh, specifically on how to stream because that's uh, that's what I've been doing a lot recently and it's been coming up a lot. Um, so we're going to uh, put a little video together so it's easier for people to go back to and see. Um, and uh and follow along so let's get into it first thing you're going to need to do before you even start streaming is to make sure that you have something that you can talk about um, even if you're gaming the games that you play you're going to want to make sure that you have a good enough grasp on them that you can actually talk about them for a while um, if it's some other topic make sure that you have enough to say that you can keep going for you know three hours uh, one of the hard parts about streaming is that a lot of the times when you're first starting out there's going to be maybe one person and they're going to last maybe five minutes um, but if you're not talking and actively engaging an empty room uh, they're not going to feel welcome enough to stay so you need to actually be engaging while you're doing these streams even if there's nobody there so let's assume that you have something to say and you have uh, an idea of what you want to do and what you want to bring to the table uh, you're going to need some equipment and you're going to need some software in order to get yourself started so the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to open up our browser and let's take a look at the different things that we need uh, so first off you're going to need to have a microphone there's absolutely no reason to stream anything including video games if you don't have a microphone where you can engage the audience uh, the entire the entire thing that makes streaming attractive to other people is the fact that they can listen to you talk and engage with you through the chat. Uh, so you need to have a microphone and the microphone has to be a good microphone. If you have poor audio quality, no matter how good the video quality is of your stream, uh, people are going to leave because our ears can't stand listening to bad audio quality. Um, so make sure that you have a good mic. Uh, this stream mic from Turtle Beach is what I'm using right now. It's a cardio mic and it's a USB mic. So you don't need to tie it into a mixer. You just plug it right into the USB port on your computer and you're good to go. Um, so let's get that out of the way. There's probably some other ones. I heard that there's a, an Arctic Blue that's good. Um, again, a cardio USB mic. Um, but I decided on this one, uh, and I'm liking it so far. After that, uh, the base stand on the Turtle Beach is not great. It's a heavy stand. It does the job. But if you're going to be uh, using your mouse at all, it is going to be picking up all of that, that sound as you, uh, you move your mouse and you click your keyboard and whatnot. Uh, so you definitely don't want that, that any kind of rubbing on the table is also going to get picked up on it. So you want something that's going to be able to pull it up off the desk uh, and reduce the amount of uh, sound you hear. This uh, boom arm is definitely a good way to go. Um, it also allows you to pull the mic closer to your face. Um, if you have it on your desk, your face is going to be probably too far away to actually get good audio quality. So having a boom arm basically allows you to get that mic right close up to your face so you can hear it well. Um, it also comes with a boom arm, uh, not a boom arm, it, the boom arm comes with a uh, pop filter. This is going to make sure that any of those pop sounds don't come through uh, and really spike your audio. They will destroy your audio if you, uh, if you start making uh, pop sounds. So make sure that you have one of those. It just basically dampens the air so that you don't get those crazy sounds and things start coming out clear. Moving on to the next set of equipment. If you want to have yourself on the stream uh, so people can see you and, and, uh, and really engage with you, you're going to want to have a webcam. Now, so for some of the projects that I've done, I've used this webcam. Uh, it's a uh, Logitech C920. It captures in 1080p, and it's really good. You're never going to be streaming above 1080 uh, unless you have really, really good internet, and the place you're streaming to allows it, and you've got a good graphics card. So 
for the most part, 1080p is going to be perfectly fine. Um, a lot of what's going to make your audio or your video quality good is going to be the lighting in your room. Now, currently on the, uh, the Commander Rithwall project that I'm doing, I don't use a webcam. Uh, frankly, that game just doesn't, because it's a VR experience, it doesn't, uh, I guess VR would be detracted if I had used a webcam with it. Um, but if you're going to be doing something where you want to have your face on the stream, you're going to want to have something like this. Let's see. Last but not least, you're going to want to have OBS Studio. Um, there's a few different softwares you can use to get yourself uh, up and broadcasting, but OBS Studio is, for me, the best out there. It is easy to use, and the most important part is it's free. And it's super simple to install too. All you're gonna have to hit is this download OBS Studio button and then pick the operating system you have. So if you're on Windows, uh, anything from seven or above will work and you just click that button and it automatically downloads it. You open up the EXE file and uh, follow the instructions. OS X, Linux, same deal. Uh, but I'm guessing that most people are gonna be using a Windows based operating system. All right, so I've already done that, so we're gonna close this down now. We're gonna actually open up OBS. All right, so when you open it up, you're gonna get this or something similar. Um, I've actually changed my uh, theme on this so that it's dark, a uh, little less strain on the eyes. But either way, in the bottom left-hand corner is your scenes. These are the, basically the different, uh, think of them as different cameras or different views on how you're gonna display things so you might have one scene where it is just your webcam another scene if you're playing a game will be the actual game footage um, you might have a be right back in case you need to go off and do something you can switch over to your be right back um, turn off your microphone and then go do what you need to do you know shit happens and I'm trying to think what other scenes you might use those are usually all i have uh, sometimes i'll have a startup screen uh, scene where I'll actually, uh, I'll show off like a countdown saying the stream will start in 15 minutes. And that way, if I'll start the stream early, people will be able to see it. They'll be able to at least know when it's going to start. They can sit around. Then as I'll chat with them in the, uh, the chat while I'm waiting for the stream to get set up. But it just gives me some time to get things set up, make sure that the stream quality is good without really streaming. Um, but for the first scene, let's work on just getting your basic main scene done. Um, so for this one, let us I don't have any games running right now, so I'm not gonna show how to do that. Um, I'll hint at it, um, but we're just gonna do a basic, here's your webcam, and it's gonna be a webcam of you talking, and we're just gonna get that out the door. So I'm gonna right click here in the sources area, go to add, and then go to video capture device. You can give this a name if you want. Um, this is helpful if you have multiple webcams. Um, you can give multiple camera angles, but we're gonna do this one, hit okay. And then select the webcam you want. I want my VR headset. So we're gonna go to this one and let's go to, uh, so I think that's all you need to do. There's a few other settings. I haven't really played around with those at all. Let's go to OK. So this is going to make your little box with your webcam in it. Um, I think you can, you can go right-click transform, and I believe you can fit to screen. And that'll set it up so that it's perfectly centered. Um, depending upon the resolution of your webcam and the layout of it, um, this could be off. Not a hundred percent sure why the uh, why it's coming out square. Let's take a quick look at the properties. Figure video, advanced settings. It sh I mean it should be in 1080p. So Maybe it's just the uh, the drivers. Maybe I haven't updated my drivers. Anti-flickering, image orientation. Hmm. 
I don't know. Well, anyways, that's how you do it. I'll let you play around with the actual settings on how to set up your webcam the way you want to. Uh, you can overextend this if you want to get like a zoom effect going on. Like, ooh. All right, so that's basically how you would set that up. Let's go back to uh, fit the screen. Transform and fit the screen. Cool. So we're back. All right, so next thing you might want to do is you can add more than just one thing to your scene. So you might want to have like a logo for your stream. So we're going to go to add and we're going to go to images and hit, let's call this logo just so it's clear. You might have multiple images on your stream. Uh, some people like to put a border on the outside edges um, with information about how you can find them on Twitter and YouTube, and that is good in some instances. You'll have to play around and find out what works on your stream when you're setting it up um, and what your uh, artistic capabilities or what uh, artistic capabilities you can afford um, if you don't have any yourself. But anyways, you come up to this image screen, you're going to hit Browse, you're gonna find the image that you want. I made this stupid little uh, Tobin stream image. Hit OK, and we can go over here and basically, you know, drag it around wherever you want and resize it the way you want to. So let's a little big. Let's put it like that, and we've got an image on our stream now, looking professional. Um, what else? Uh, if you wanted to do a game, so let's say this is our in-between sessions and we're talking um, with everybody, you can go here and do add again, do a new scene. Uh, we'll call this game scene. Now, I don't actually have a video game that I can actually put on here, but you would just, again, right-click, add game capture and call this game. And then you would go to game specific window and then you would figure out something that you wanted to show. And if you were playing a game, it would show up here. Move. You could also do um, some of these other ones. You can do a, uh, let's see, you can add text. So instead of making that image, I could just do this is Tobin's stream. Thanks for joining us. So we can do that as well. So if you want to add little text messages, you can do it that way. Uh, you can go to, there should be a window capture, window capture. And so this, you can basically select what window you want and it will uh, it'll grab those and allow you to import those into your scene. So you can do uh, a web browser or something like that if you wanted to have those. This is a little trippy because it's it's basically the application that we're using uh, that we're showing. But you know it is what it is. And also this stack changes. So right now we put our window on top. So if we want to have that text be on top, we just need to drag that above so that it uh, it appears there. So let us uh, close that out now. Delete both of those. And so there's two ways of switching between scenes while you're actually streaming. Uh, you're gonna want to either do it right here. You can go and you can select scenes and this will flip them back and forth on your scene just like that. If you wanna preview what's gonna actually happen, OBS Studio is great because it has this studio mode button in the bottom right hand corner. You just click on that and it changes it. So now we can actually select scene one. Now we can pick our transition. You can hit that and that'll transition between the two. You can cut um, or you can fade. Well, you can hit transition. It'll, it should do a quick little fade. You can change the, uh, the distance on this, I guess. Oh, oh. Yeah, these are these are different transitions. So you got to click the actual transition button. But so now we can slowly fade it, get that really dramatic effect going on. Um, so once you have that set up, you're going to be pretty good. Uh, a couple other things that you might want to do to make sure that your audio is good is because you've got your video, you've got what you want to have people see while they're on the stream. Now you got to make sure that your audio is good. 
So you've got different types of audio. You have desktop audio. So if you want to play some music on your computer, um, you can play that in the background. That's going to be shown here on the desktop audio bar. And then you can see this green line that's constantly moving. That is me uh, talking here on the, my mic. Now there's a couple things you're going to want to do to set up your mic so that you get some really, really good sound. Uh, if you click this uh, gear icon here and then go to filters, this is going to pop up uh, your whole filter screen. So you can hit this plus sign and you can pick gate, noise suppression, and noise gate. First one you're going to want to do is noise suppression and you're going to want to try and drag this all the way down so that when you're quiet there should be almost no sound on this uh, mic aux level. This, this green bar should basically be gone. So for mine I had to bring the suppression almost all the way down uh, so it doesn't pick up even my uh, the sound from my fans on my computer. Next you're going to want to do is you're going to do noise gate. Uh, this is the cream of the crop right here. Uh, you don't want to have little things like your breathing and stuff like that uh, cut it out. You know, like you hear all that little little annoying stuff. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to change these. Um, you're going to find out basically where you want the mic to start picking you up. Um, so I found that mine is roughly around negative 30 decibels is where when I'm talking, I really want it to pick me up. So with that in mind, you're going to set the close threshold to negative 32, which is like two below that. And then you're going to set your open threshold to be one uh, down to 29. So I guess one less than, uh, than 30. And that should do it. Um, so now when I'm talking, you'll see that the green bar moves, but when I cut out, it almost instantly cuts out. Perfect. The release time here is, uh, these are all in milliseconds, but you can, I guess, see how long it stays open for once it doesn't detect any audio from you. If you mess up this, uh, you're either going to be open micing the entire time. So when you're quiet, you're not going to, you're going to be still hearing, you know, your breathing or your swallowing or whatever else you're doing, chewing food. Uh, and if you have it the opposite way, it's probably going to cut off the first word of whatever you say. Um, so you're going to really want to play around with this and make sure that when you stop talking, it cuts out. And when you start talking, it pops right back up. And you can just see that by playing with these bars and looking at the green number. All right, so audio should be good now. You should be well on your way to uh, having a good recording. First thing, once you have all of this set up, is you're going to want to do some test recording. So you're just going to hit your start recording button, um, and that's going to, to do some recordings. But actually, before we do that, let's go into our profile. And here. Where do we do it again? Edit, file, settings. File settings, there we go. All right, so we're in here, go to, let me just switch, yeah. All right, so general, not really have to care. This is where I changed my theme to dark. Um, if you like it, that's where you can do that stream so this is if you're going to be doing live streaming and not just recordings this is where you're going to be setting up uh, who your stream service is um, if you're using um, twitch or youtube hitbox beam daily motion live coding facebook live restream um, i love restream uh, restream basically allows you to you stream to them and they take care of all of the work of streaming it out to all of the other places. So if you want to stream out to Facebook or you want to stream out to uh, YouTube or Hitbox or Ustream, all these different places, you can just stream to them and then they'll take care of the rest. Um, you can also pick your server. So if you're on the West Coast or the East Coast, um, 
Well, if you're in uh, Prague, you can you can put that one. Whatever you think is going to be closest to you, you can go ahead and set that up. And then every streamer uh, site is going to have a stream key. So you would normally just copy and paste that in and put that into your stream. All right. Then we would move on to output. So output is going to really be determined by what you are what your internet service provider is. Um, I'll put a link in the description of where you can go to calculate this. Um, but usually a you set your uh, rate control to CBR, you're gonna set your bit rate to uh, 2,500, 2,000, something like that. I think I have about four and a half megabytes up. Um, so usually around 2,000 gives me good, uh, good audio or good video quality. Um, then we can go to audio. Audio, you're gonna to wanna to do 48 hertz. Um, make sure that you have your microphone selected, all your audio set up that way. Um, that's gonna give you really, really good, crisp, clear audio. Then we can do video. Um, video, you can do your base resolution at 1080. Depending upon how good your internet is, you might need to switch this off, or switch the, uh, the the scaling resolution down to 720. So you'll actually record at 1080p, but what people will see when you're on your stream is 720. It's not that big of a deal, um, but it it's better to have a good consistent stream than a good quality stream that only lasts for about three seconds, and then it someone has to wait for their uh, their system to buffer. So yeah, make sure that you're streaming at the best quality you can while staying consistent and you know having a good flow on the uh, on the server uh, hotkeys these are more advanced uh, you can play around with these once you really get started this is basically ways to uh, tie your keyboard into switching scenes uh, raising lowering audio all that kind of stuff without having to actually you know move your mouse around and try to find it um, you can start and stop your stream that way it's they're pretty cool but Again, more advanced type stuff. Um, also in advanced, we have, um, i trying to think if there's anything here that's worth seeing. Uh, file name formatting, so you can put a, your name in for how you want your file name. You can just leave this the way it is, but it basically just puts it in by, uh, by date. Um, I think there was something else that I wanted to show. Where was it? Oh, on the uh, the output page. So we went through the streaming tab, but I forgot the other ones. So streaming, there's also a recording tab. Um, so here you're going to put in where you want your, uh, so you can back up your, your a recording of what you're actually going to be streaming. Um, so you have that if you want to do any post video editing. Uh, so people can watch your stream and then you can put maybe a consolidated video out that has like really, really good quality. This is how you do that. So you're going to go to put in your the path where you want it to be. Uh, you can select the recording format. I personally prefer MP4 for video recording. Um, I find that's easier to, to work with in video editing programs. Um, you can rescale output. Um, so you can actually record to your computer at 1080p but stream outward to 720 so the people watching live might get a bad quality but when you upload the video afterwards you can actually have on like youtube you can have a really good 1080p video so that's how you can do that there um, again bit rates i tend to be what is this 30,000. um i've got some pretty good connections so you might need to play around with that bit rate and then audio, I think all of these should just be at 160 um, for the bit rate for those. That'll give you really good crystal clear audio quality there. And that's pretty much all you need to do. I would say once you have that done, um, play around, set up some scenes, practice switching between scenes, and I would do everything via recording first. There's two buttons here on the right-hand side. 
um, we've got start streaming and start recording. Make sure you do some test recordings first. Make sure that you, uh, you know what you're gonna say, you practice around with it. If you're gonna be doing an intro, make sure that you have the timing right on the intro. If you're gonna be playing some music and then transitioning to one of the other scenes, practice that a few times. There's nothing worse than being under the pressure of trying to do it live. Um, especially if you've gone ahead and told a bunch of people about it and they're all showing up to see you on the first time and then just having that that one fumble and it kind of throws you off for your talking for the rest of it. So, yeah, make sure you do some test recordings. Make sure that it's working. Um, probably even do a few streams uh, without telling anyone. You know, get it set up. Make sure that the stream's working. Check the auto quality. Make sure somebody else uh, checks it out from, uh, you know, like a different house. Know, tell a friend like hey can you check this out for a little bit make sure that the audio quality is good the video quality is good uh, you might have to change those bit rates to make sure that you're streaming nice and smooth um, but once you get all of that done you should be all set and then you can just have a, a whole bunch of fun streaming so i hope this video was helpful again i've had a lot of questions over the years on how to do this and uh, decided tonight to break it down and go through the entire process um, so yeah, if you uh, you start streaming and this video helped, be sure to leave a video or a link to your channel or where your stream is in the comments. I'd love to check it out, see how it works. And uh, yeah, until next time, guys, thanks for watching.